Hi, I'm Dustin Hurst, Vice President of Idaho Freedom Foundation and Idaho Freedom Action. You are joining us uh, for Empowered Learning 101, a class to help you help your student and yourself become a better self-directed, curious learner. This is, again, class three of Empowered Learning. We are being taught, and we're lucky to be taught by Rebecca Bowman, who is a veteran homeschool mom uh, from Idaho Falls. Um, we're, we're, again, we're lucky to have her and her experience. She's got great kids and, and, um, I'm personally, I'm very excited. I know I've said this before, but I'm very excited about this class because as you can see, it's 704 and we're late because of me. So, uh, with that intro, Hi. Rebecca, go ahead and, and, uh, let's get this thing kicked off. Tell us a little bit about yourself and then let's, uh, let's start learning some time management because I need it. Well, I hope we can drag people away from the presidential or vice presidential election because these are the things that's really going to matter, right? These are the things that's going to make the biggest difference in our nation and our country is the stuff that we do at our own homes. <laughs> Let's quote, uh, you know, a former first lady there, <laughs> but, but it's really true. And um, a, lot of, a lot of people always ask how, how you get everything done. That's the big question. And so we're going to kind of talk about that a little bit tonight on, you know, how to manage our time, how to manage that home learning, but welcome to Empowered Learning 101. Uh, yeah, today's session is going to be focused on uh, learning or living with learning in all aspects, of, all aspects of life and how to manage that multifaceted life of home education and, and home, uh, home management as well. And we're going to talk a lot about teaching kids life skills for better um, home management and preparing them for the future. I didn't realize that that was going to be like the most important thing I could have kept my kids home for. Um, but like I said, I've had two kids leave home, both boys, both. I never worried about, um, you know, them being able to take care of themselves because they had naturally learned so many life skills. I don't think you can pick up how to run your life, how to run your home, how to run your finances all from a few classes at school. I really think that, um, this is one of the most important things we can teach our kids. Uh, but first, before we start, a big thank you to the Idaho Freedom Action. Uh, we've got a Facebook page that we've created for you, and, um, and you sh we should be able to hopefully get to Empowered Learning 101. We talked about that in our Monday's uh, session, and I think I dropped the ball. As you can tell, I'm not at my regular house <laughs> or doing an on-the-road type of thing uh, while we have a break. But thank you for providing this class, because like I said, I think these are super more important than any presidential, vice presidential election could be. Just a quick introduction of myself. My name is Rebecca Bowman. I am the host of the, Lime, of the Luminous Mind podcast. I have been married for 26 years. I have four great kids who I began homeschooling on accident. Um, my oldest son is actually a homeschool graduate, followed by my 18-year-old, uh, who is, they have both left the home. We just have Emily, 15, and Tate, 12, here with us now. I've been online homeschooling, um, kind of that combination, for 16-plus years. I would call myself a learning enthusiast, and I really credit um, home education for that, because I learned a lot about learning. I learned a lot about myself through this experience. Um, hopefully we can get some group, <laughs> some introductions going. I'm hoping we get a few more people joining us. If you're joining us on Facebook Live, please introduce yourself in the chat. Tell us who you are. Tell us your family dynamics. Tell us, you know, where you're located. Um, what you're doing for your children's education that you don't necessarily have to be schooling them at home. Uh, tell us what your worry, you know, what you are worried about, your fears, or even successes that you've had. Um, but to kick us off, Dustin, do you want to introduce yourself yeah, for us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my name, again, is Dustin Hurst. I'm the vice president here at Idaho Freedom Action and Idaho Freedom Foundation. I've been doing um, nonprofits uh, work for my entire career. That's been about 10 years now, which is amazing to think about. It's like yesterday I graduated from high school, but uh, yeah, time, time moves quickly. Um, but more importantly, I am a dad. Uh, I'm a husband and a dad. I've got three kiddos. One is uh, almost nine. One is okay. six. And Are you there? Are, am, I, am I there? Can you hear me? 
Yeah, it froze for a minute. Oh, that's weird. Well, our inter- <laughs> it says our internet connection is unstable. So anyway, okay. let me start again. So I most importantly, I'm a dad. I, um, uh, I have three kiddos. One's eight, one's six, and one is almost two. Um, and we homeschool our kids. We decided to pull them out uh, of their charter school for two reasons. Number one, um, the coronavirus. I wasn't comfortable with the distance learning or the hybrid learning. So we just wanted to uh, provide some stability for our kids. So my wife is a great homeschooler. She does an excellent job. Um, and then the charter school is a little bit um, uh, more progressive than I preferred. So um, we wanted to give our kids a more traditional education and um, teach them our way and teach them our values and stuff. And um, again, I'm very grateful for this class because I am the worst at time management. I've tried a million things to get better at this. And I'm, again, I'm, I'm just thrilled to be here. So thank you again, Rebecca. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> I teach because I cannot do sometimes. So just to keep uh, my reiteration, so I'm not the best at it either, but we're going to work through it together. Just to review uh, what we talked about last week, we did our second part of getting started. That session was focused on looking at your relationships with your kids differently and how positivity creates uh, learning longevity. It was a really great class where we also talked about keeping yourself open to those new learning ideas, changing that paradigm of learning uh, to better prepare kids for their you know, unique purposes. And then also we talked a lot about learning styles, which I think is really important. I think that's the one, one of the coolest things about schooling your kids at home is that you can make that very um, individualized for you and for your children, uh, for sure. You can find those recordings at theluminousmind.net for the last two classes. So um, just look there just for a review. But today's session on time management will be how we're going to talk about changing our expectations, for one. We're also going to talk about how living with learning in all aspects of life and how to manage that multifaceted life with home education and, you know, just all the management that we have. And also, we're going to spend a little bit of time about uh, talking about teaching our kids those life skills for better home management and preparing them for the future. I always love to do these resource pages. If you've noticed on the two classes that we've already done, I've posted these links. So if you can't see them completely right now, uh, I'm sorry, I have a ton of links. In fact, I, I actually pared this down this afternoon because I was like, there's just too much on here. Um, one of my favorite uh, websites to go to is Psychology Today, uh, mostly because Peter Gray actually writes for psychology. I've mentioned his, I've plugged his book several times, um, Free to Learn. It's a great book. I highly recommend it. But there's uh, three articles on there, one for time management, one for motivation and goal setting. Because I think when we're working with kids, sometimes we're working with low motivated children. And um, how can we create those motivations and that goal setting can also help with time management. And then also leadership. Um, I know this kind of doesn't, may not feel like it goes a lot with what we're talking about with time management, but we have to mentor time management for our kids. Also uh, another amazing thing, reason why educating your children at home can be so fantastic is they learn a lot of um, time management skills. You know, the school isn't doing that for them that they're having to learn how to do those things on their own. I did a really great podcast just recently. Um, it was episode 251 with David Allen. He's the president of Getting Things Done. I highly recommend, he has a great book, but I highly recommend checking out that podcast as well as a lot of his resources because he has some great resources for time management. And then also we're gonna talk a little bit about that Parkinson's law and how to use that to your advantage either with your own you know, household things that you're doing, with your own goal setting, or with uh, how to teach your children how to, how to be able to manage their time as well. There's also a good um, YouTube video on the Pomodoro technique, um, which kind of works. I think you can use the two together really well. Um, I sometimes get them mixed up because I do interchange them a lot when I'm working with time management. We're also going to talk about age-appropriate training for kids, I think is super important. There's a great website to go to. Uh, you can download a free printable thing about, you know, what are the best uh, chores for kids to do, like what are age-appropriate things to do. Um, also, the fly lady, she's a favor of all home, uh, great homeschooling families, and she has a lot of really great resources and tips on how to organize your home for that family learning environment. Um, 15 time management tips for homeschoolers 
And then uh, for your own learning, uh, a really great podcast that I found. Actually, I'm trying to get her on my podcast, so if anyone can help me, but by Dr. Joe Boisler of Limitless Mind. And I think when we're talking about time management, we want to go back to that why that I've just pounded home on what we're doing and, and why we're doing it when we're setting up our, you know, our schedule of what we want to have done. Uh, with so many hats that we have as parents, uh, learning consultants, learning coaches, uh, grandparents, whatever you want to call it, um, sometimes we ask those questions, how do we get it all done? What, um, I'd love to know like what's on your to-do list and what do you feel like that you're not getting done? Um, sometimes we have to really pinpoint um, those things like where we, you know, where that fits in our feeling of success. Um, sometimes well, as we move to this, um, this uh, slide, sometimes it comes back to changing those expectations. Um, like we said, this is, it's, it's, it is taking on more responsibility to, to have your children home. Um, sometimes when your kids are gone, you can stay a lot more focused on the things that you want to do. So it does require a little bit of changing those expectations of what we feel like is the, really the most important thing. And I'm hoping that if you've really um, looked over that why of why you're doing this type of learning, family learning lifestyle, homeschooling, whatever you want to call it. I like to think of it as a family project myself, but um, hopefully you think that that is one of the most important things that you can do. And it helps us to scale back other things. You know, a lot of times we have in our mind, like what the perfect homeschooling mother should look like. And let me tell you, she's not out there or he's not out there. Um, you know, they, they just don't exist. A lot of them have had to prioritize uh, different things um, to really, you know, figure out what's important. So we want to think back to that why as we prioritize those tasks that are important to you. Really ask your question, the question of what helps you feel successful with all your hats. Um, to me, it came with like scaling that down, you know, like what I'm, I'm a, I'm a total clean freak. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. And I had to really scale that down on what is important for me. Um, are there hats that you can throw off and have others help you? I was thinking about this, you know, as I was thinking about this um, class, I was thinking about, I belong to a group here. Um, it's called the um, I family leadership Academy. And I know several mothers help each other with many different chores. One of them is dinners. They have a, a small little group that they get together and they actually like for one week, one family's in charge of making all the food for that, that group of five or six families. And that may seem like a lot, but really, if you think about it, it's actually pretty easy to make larger quantities of the same thing. And so, you know, that's what they do in order to help each other. There might be grandparents that might be wanting to help you out too. Um, I really think that that's a, a resource that we should look for as well. Um, so, you know, just think about that. What are some things that you can throw off? What are some things that you need help with? What are some things that you could hire out? Um, I love the analogy and we're going to talk about it a little bit more in other classes that we're going to talk about, but those balls, you know, sometimes we're juggling all these balls, all these responsibilities that we have to do. And some are glass balls, some are uh, balls that if we drop, they're going to break and we can't recover them which I feel like that's like the self-help things. You know, those are the things of taking care of yourself that are really important. But some are rubber balls. Some can drop, you can drop and they'll bounce and then later you can pick it up and, and put it back in the juggling thing. And I think that's really important. Um, I love this meme here of, you know, the scrubbing and the cleaning can always wait because our kids really do grow up. I have two that have left the house way earlier than I've wanted them to, um, you know, and so sometimes we have to really prioritize that, that building those relationships with our children are really the most important thing uh, of all. So let's move on to time management, which is the ability to plan and control how we're spending our days effectively to accomplish our goals. Um, poor time management can be related with procrastination. That was one that I tossed out. But if you, if you look at those uh, psychology today, um, it actually has links for different things on how to curb procrastination. Um, it also is a problem with self-control, which was one of those other um, resources that I had to throw out. But um, sometimes we have to really look at that and how we're controlling our time. And then um, when we're talking about 
time management, we, we really do have to lead this for our children. Um, sometimes we get really frustrated with them if they're not managing their time very well, but sometimes all we have to do is really look in the mirror and realize that, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of that. I spend way too much time um, not managing my time in appropriate ways. So just some quick hacks is this Parkinson's law, which I don't know if anyone knows about Parkinson's law, but basically work expands to fill the time that's available for its completion. And there's a website there that you can go to on just how to implement that Parkinson's law to your advantage. But really, I mean, what it's, what, what it's really, what, we're, what we wanna use this for is that we want to, you know, if you give yourself nine to five to work on a, a set of tasks, you're gonna feel that whole eight hours um, to get it done. And I don't know how many people have seen that happen, but that happens with me all the time. And I really think to create that self-directed love of learning family, the most valuable thing that we can do is teach and mentor to them time management. Um, and these were some ways I could kind of keep my kids a little bit more motivated on their schoolwork, a little bit mo more motivated on helping around the house. Um, and what we would really do, and this is where the Pomodoro technique and, um, and the Parkinson's law kind of works together. But sometimes I would just ask them like, how long do you think this task was gonna take you? And we would, we would set a timer. Um, that doesn't always work for all kids. My last child hated that. He felt like it was kind of like a quiz <laughs> type of thing. But I did find it was actually really helpful if I wanted, if we were working on a project as a family, you know, like working to clean the living room or whatever, they really appreciated that timer because when, when the timer was done, you know, we had worked for 20 minutes, very focused on that one job, 20 to 30 minutes, and they knew once that timer went off, it, we, we could be done with that project. And really with something like house cleaning, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, yeah, you could spend 20 minutes working on something and, you know, you can usually get a bathroom cleaned in 20 to 30 minutes, something like that. But if you can teach them to do 20 minute work sessions and then that they can take a 10 to 15 minute break and then come back around, um, sometimes we get way more done in that 20 minutes than we would all day. In fact, I have been learning that um, a lot of companies are starting to use that now where they wanna to try to make the, their employees work time more effectively, that they're using these techniques and they're realizing that, you know, when we have eight to five time schedule for things, a lot of times we are wasting a lot of time at work and that's the same thing at home. So sometimes those tiny focused work sessions really help us to get things done. I have a fly that's flying around me, <laughs> it's driving me crazy. All right, but, um, yeah, so sometimes just working with them, teaching them that time management thing is really helpful. This was one thing that I did um, early on, and I don't know where I got it from. I think my mother, in fact, I know she did. She went to some kind of church function, and it was all about how to manage your life and whatever. And in fact, it was very detailed. Um, it was two pages long. And it was like your daily jobs, your monthly jobs, and your semi-annual jobs. And um, so for each one of these days, there would be the daily jobs listed, and then you would do one or two monthly jobs, and then you would do uh, a semi-annual one a couple times a, uh, a week or something like this. But this is one that I had to kind of recreate as I began homeschooling my kids. And I really found that if I had a consistent time and day for every task, the tasks that are important to me, that is, um, I was really able to always feel like I was being successful at managing our home and our life. Um, so sometimes just taking little times and little bits for each task made a big difference. And this is where that Parkinson law can really work really well. If you can set time for each one of those tasks, it makes it really possible to get a whole lot more done. And I wish I was better like implementing in my home life with my, my work life with, but yeah, but if we can do that where we're, we're doing daily tasks uh, for everything. And sometimes um, when we're creating this list, we have to list everything out of what we really need to do. And that's why I want you to really focus on what would help make you feel successful if you could get those things done and making sure that it gets put on this daily to-do list. Um, 
Also, you have to be really flexible in building your task list, list and keep it unique for your family and for your needs. Every year, this chart, this list would change. And each one of my kids, we, you know, they would see me do this and then they would build a list like this too of daily things that they would have to get done all the time or weekly things that they would want to do. Um, this was an example of a few years ago. And one of the awesome things about this is that I could help um, make it unique for the kids. So if you notice, I can put down what we're going to have for dinner. So on the very bottom, this is dinner. And I have a helper, which is my, was my son Tate. And it really helped them. That was another skill that I was teaching them. So you can implement that. You can put it, you can make it unique for your own family and their own needs. Um, and then I would have big to-do um, lists, like those semi-annual things that was on my mom's main list. I would put those in the off season time. You know, I'd put those on times like when there's a Christmas break or when there is um, the summer break or something like that and, and kind of focus on those bigger projects at different times. Sometimes if it's driving you crazy though, instead of always thinking about it, it might be worth the time to take an afternoon or a weekend or something and get it done. I really do think that um, sometimes if something's nagging at you at the back of your mind, the best thing you can do is just get, get it over with, <laughs> get it done. Um, also plan days that you're at home and days that are errand days. That was another thing I found for science. Um, uh, you know, you want to kind of batch those same items kind of all together. So if I would, uh, you know, if I had to go out and we had to go to piano lessons, for instance, or whatever, I'd make sure like it was followed by a doctor's appointment or it was followed by, um, you know, going to get groceries or running errands or something like that. Because I found that I, if I had more time, I had days that I'm just at home, this is my, or you can use this for work if this is Dustin, <laughs> but you can go, okay, this is my time in the office. Um, on Mondays. I don't go anywhere. I don't do that. I, you know, and then on other days when you're running errands, try to batch those similar things together. Uh, I really think though the biggest key is just to be gentle with yourself because life is messy, right? It's always going to change. There's always going to be things that come up and you just kind of go, go with the flow. But the more that you can plan, I think um, the more you feel like you're ready to take on those things. Um, so some tips, uh, does anyone have any tips for, do we have any questions, any tips of how people get things done? Um, I'm, this is kind of a pause. <laughs> thing, but um, I, I, well, I, I think one thing that derails me, and this isn't exactly within the vein, I, I think, but one thing that constantly derails me is um, perfectionism mm -hmm. and, and fear of learning new lessons and fear of doing new stuff. So like today, um, I had to do something that was totally new and I'm a little worried about it to make sure it works out. You know, we're spending money on a certain project. And so I, it was on my to-do list for today and about two o'clock, I found myself just scrolling Facebook and in my mind it was, Oh, you know, I'm doing this so I can check up to see if there's anything going on that we need to write about or just be aware about. Well, that's not true. So I, I took a moment. I was like, so Dustin, what are you, why are you procrastinating? Cause you're doing it on purpose. What are you scared about? What are you yeah. worried about? Um, so just if you find yourself procrastinating, especially if you're on social media, just scrolling endlessly, not really adding value to your life, try to figure out what you're trying to avoid. Because I like that. It's yes. very telling. And then, then after you s discover that, be okay with it, understand that there's some fear, and then do it anyway yeah. and learn from it. So. Yeah. Well, one of the reasons why I like this list that I have is that it helps keep me mindful. And I think that's what you're saying is that you, know, you always want to be mindful of like, if you find yourself procrastinating, I like the idea of like you stopping, you know, why am I procrastinating this? What am I scared of? And that's the same thing like with this list. Um, sometimes if I have a list, it keeps me mindful of the things that I want to have done. And the cool thing is, so like every Sunday, you can set your list of what you want to have done on certain days. And, um, and then you're more mindfully thinking of it. And sometimes if, if it's something that you do find yourself procrastinating, um, uh, you know, a, a project or something that you know you're going to procrastinate at, make sure you put that at the top of your list. Sometimes if we get that horrible thing out of the way, <laughs> sometimes that's more helpful too, I think, uh, definitely for sure. 
Yeah. Um, does is there any comments at all? Like you know, areas that might be fr you might be frustrated with with mixing that learning and that living together. Anything at all? Uh, not yet. Okay. Okay. So just be thinking of that for sure. Um, I love this quote by Martin Luther King. You don't have to see that whole staircase to just take the first step. And that's like whenever we're working with um, uh, time management and stuff like that, sometimes, you know, we have our goal, we have our expectation of what we're thinking here. Um, and then just taking all those tiny little steps sometimes help us. Um, this was from, uh, I just kind of added this stuff in from this year since I just talked to David Allen from Getting Things Done. But he really talks about how um, going through these five steps is really helpful to help get those things, those projects done that you want. And all of us have projects, even stay-at-home moms with homeschooling kids, we have different projects. Um, I think the thing that stood out to me the most with my conversation with David Allen was the word capture. He was thinking about how important that was because sometimes, sometimes when stuff is just mulling around in your head, if it's not written down, it will just continue to take up space in your head and it will create a, a situation where you're, it zaps your creativity, it zaps, you know, it, it zaps your drive because, but once it's captured, um, you know, once you, once you can collect what has your attention, um, sometimes that helps just to ease that. And then um, to clarify that, process what that means. You know, is that a new project that you want to work on? Is it, is it something you can work on? Is it actionable? Is it just something that's bothering you? If not, you can decide what action to take. And sometimes it just needs to be trashed. Sometimes it's just a reference on something that you want to do something later. So you might want to file it somewhere. Um, and that's what the next part of organizing it, you know, put it where it belongs. Is it something you can work on now? You know, I know on our Facebook Live that we talked about on Monday, sometimes we have to really think about our time in life. I, I'm doing a lot different things now with older children than I was when I had a two-year-old. You know, you just can't do some of those things that you want to, but it's great if you can, you can put those things in for future goals um, of things that you want to do later. So sometimes we just have to organize that and put those in categories of that appropriate place. Um, the other thing I really liked is he talked about that reflection all the time, just to re uh, constantly review and update um, how that system's working for you to regain your control and your focus all the time, just to constantly be kind of coming back, going on with the scouting, the start, stop, and continue. You know, what, what do I need to start doing? What do I need to stop doing? And what do, um, what do we need to continue to do? That reflection is super important. And then just engage, you know, simply just get at that list of what you're doing. Um, he has a whole system of things that you can do um, to maybe be a little bit more organized. But uh, I think just those five points were super important. You know, be creative, strategic, and simply present and loving. It doesn't require time. It just requires space. It just requires you plugging it in somewhere sometimes to get it done. And this is if you're a a vision, you know, if you, if you're a visual learner, uh, I think this is kind of the really important thing to just help you to uh, process and organize that flow. You know, something comes in, into your brain, what is it? You know, is it something that's actual, uh, actionable? If it's not, then you need to eliminate it or you need to, maybe it's something you have to incubate. Maybe it's something that's just a reference. Um, if it is actionable, put it on, you know, put it in some kind of a system for projects and talk about what's the next actions what's the planning to make that happen and then um, then just do it um, or delegate it or defer it you know put it in your calendar somewhere uh, make specific time for you to do that uh, make um, time uh, uh, what the next action is and I think in your calendar too you um, in that defer area we always want to put in a uh, margin we want to put in extra time especially with little kids and with, uh, you know, things that happen in the home. I just have found that if I, I need to give myself a lot of extra margin time, I need to not plan things so closely together because that can also, especially with little kids, um, I'd find myself screaming at my three-year-old, where's your shoes? Where's your shoes? We have to go you know, type of thing. But if I plan in that little extra margin, that was super important. 
And another thing, uh, if you have the freedom and power to do so, if you're not part of some online school that requires so much work every day, um, I would make all of your days that you're doing, uh, your away days, those very light school days for sure. You know, if you're gonna be out of the house, don't expect a lot on the school front. And realize that kids are learning even when they're out in public. You know, if you didn't get to that math lesson that day, the day that you're gonna be doing your, your, um, uh, your way days, that's okay. So um, I think it's really important, like I said at the beginning of our conversation, it's really important for kids to learn life skills and teaching kids life skills, it needs to be seen as an important part of their education. Um, this was one thing I was always super glad that I homeschooled for because my kids learned how to do some things. I found you can find all kinds of charts of what's age appropriate for children to doing, for children to be doing. Usually when children are very young, they like to be doing, they like to be helping somehow. It makes them feel important. And I would not say that that ever really goes away. What goes away is that they've learned that the way that they have done it is not what you want, you wanted. And they have felt disappointed in themselves because they couldn't do that, that project to your expectations. And I think that's really important as parents too that we recognize that what a child does is at their level. And that's maybe where that expectations, throwing off those expectations. You know, if your kid vacuums the floor and I mean, of course we wanna like, oh great, that's great. Let's try to get the corners. You know, let's try to vacuum out the, the spider webs along the floor or something like that. Those are things you can definitely add on, but always over praise children because I think they'll always keep that excitement to be helping. I know too that it's been said a lot of times that when kids have chores at home, even if they're, you're not homeschooling them, um, having them do those chores at home gives them a sense of belonging. Um, they may fight you on it. They, they may think you're the worst parent in the world. I had that happen once when I think uh, our, our second boy, he was about 11, 12 years old, and we were making everybody work out in the yard and do some weeding and stuff like that. And, he was thinking we were the worst parents ever. And then he heard the neighbors just screaming and fighting and a whole bunch of horror. <laughs> and he decided we weren't so bad at that point. But you know, kids will think you're horrible for making them do some things. But at the same time, um, uh, if you can always be super excited about their help, I think that you're going to keep them engaged too. Uh, teaching kids those life skills for better home management can prepare them for the future. Um, we hear a lot of times how teens are having problems adulting. I can tell you, this is one of the- I hate the that word. Yes, I hate that word. But, but we see that. We see kids yeah. that go off to college and they don't know how to do the simplest things, like how to manage their own checkbook, how to do their own laundry, how to make a simple meal for themselves. These are things they have no idea how to do. And then they take on that victim mentality that we're seeing. I think that's why we hate the word, right, Dustin, is because- all of a sudden they're some kind of victim. And yeah. that's not true. They, what happened is that they got, they got sent off to school to learn algebra while every, somebody else was managing their life for them. So we really want you to think about how are you over-parenting your children? You need to stop it because it's stopping your children's growth from learning to take care of themselves. Um, even the simplest thing of making the bed, and I'm the worst at this because my uh, son will leave and I just can't handle a bed not made. Uh, probably the best thing I can do is close the door <laughs> to his room. Um, but I find myself making his bed sometimes. But what are ways that you're over-parenting? Uh, and we need to, to stop um, doing so many things that kids can do themselves. What are some skills that they're going to need to adult well? What are some things that you want them to be able to, um, when they leave the house, you know, that for them to do for themselves? Um, I think that, isn't that the ultimate goal of parenting? That we get to a point where we have taught our kids so well on how to take care of themselves, how to be self-directed learners, whatever, that they don't need us anymore. That should be all of our goal. Um, sadly, some parents, um, it's almost a... I'm trying to think of the word like an afterthought. No, it helps us feel needed. 
it's oh, it's a it's like a savior complex type thing. Yeah, kind of thing. Um, oh. Yeah, we. I, I think I I talked on one of my recent podcasts that sometimes moms feel like martyrs, and it makes us feel good because we feel like we you know we do all of this for our family, and you know, and if they, especially if they don't appreciate it, we can kind of come back as this martyr complex, um, and we don't want to do that because that can be it damages us, it hurts our children. Um, but we want to help to try to instill those things in our children. And that's why I think looking at those tasks of what are some things that my kids can do? How are some ways that they can help me is super important. Um, so look at learning life skills just as, just as important. It's just as important of a part of a child's education. Learning how to cook a meal for yourself may be more important than learning algebra two in a lot of cases. And I think we're seeing that. We're seeing a lot of... of um, young people that are feeling very cheated that they yeah they know how to do algebra but they don't know how to take care of some basic necessities in their life adulting is one area that young adults are really struggling and you can't learn all aspects of life skills in a semester of home ec it is not possible and that's one thing um uh when we have children at home with us it does this is actually re really not very difficult. In fact, sometimes you can have a child uh, throw in a load of laundry during a lesson. You know, that can be part of their 10 or 15 minute break between that pom Pomodoro technique. Sometimes you can put a, a chore in there as part of their uh, school, um, school life. And we want to just keep in mind that we want, um, we should expect that children will not do that task perfectly. Um, that's where I struggle with. I think that's what you're saying, Dustin, that um, I'm, a, I'm a perfectionist. So if it doesn't get done perfectly, then I, I sometimes, you know, try to avoid over or redoing it, <laughs> try to avoid, yeah. because uh, your, ki your kids will pick up on that and they will, um, they will not have, uh, it will actually hurt their self-esteem quite a bit. Um, one of, uh, oh, dang, and I didn't put this in there, I was going to, I have had a couple of discussions with Marianne Johnson. She's an amazing lady. She's actually a grandmother at this point. She's uh, the homeschooling mentor. And I'll have to, in the notes for this, when we drop it into you know, the pre-recorded, I'll have to put her contact information. She has a really great um, weekly blog that she sends out or weekly email on different tips. But I remember her talking about, one of the things that I learned from her is she said that the greater success on the tasks, um, really uh, the greater success in tasks is the completion of that, um, of that project by working together as a family. Like, so one of the worst things that we can do is send a child off to do chores. One of the best things that we can do is to go in and do those things with them. And um, it really creates that connection with kids. Kids don't if, I don't know if you've noticed this, Dustin, but your, your kids sometimes have to come in and check on you, right? I mean, kids really do crave being around other adults or other people. We are very social animals. So the more that we can do those jobs with our kids, the more the tasks will be done the way we would like them to be done, the better they will learn how to do the tasks. And then it's actually a, a time of family connectedness. And um, I really found that really cool. Like if you have, you know, if it's on your daily list to, to clean the living room, make sure you're giving each child one of those jobs. And that's where that Pomodoro technique can really work amazing is that, you know, if you have 20 minutes to get this done, flight of the bumblebee, and then the kid knows that after that, I get my time to do my thing. He's, they're going to dive right in and they're going to get that done. Um, of course, you as a parent, you do have that expectation of what you want done. And so those are good things to lay out before time. These are the tasks that need to be done. This is how they need to be done. And let's give it 20 minutes, I think is super important, but really great um, material and really good podcast to listen to with Marianne Johnson. I'll include those. Just remember to be really gentle with yourself. Um, you know, sometimes as parents, as people, um, we just get you know, like Dustin was talking about, if we're perfectionists, um, and I'm like that too, we can get really pretty, pretty down on ourselves by not getting all of our stuff done, you know, getting all the tasks done that we feel like we need to. But um, as long as we're constantly striving and constantly trying to work on it, I think that we'll be successful and we'll have 
we'll be able to mentor that for your kids. I think that's probably one of the most important things to think about is that we're not only trying to do time management for ourselves, we're trying to be a good mentor for our kids because they're going to pick up on those things um, so much more than what we can ever like teach them for sure. Um, so thanks for joining the session. Does anyone have any questions? Is everyone still watching that silly vice presidential debate? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's not as feisty as the last one is what I'm <laughs> hearing, but uh, thank goodness okay. for thank that. Goodness. Yes. Um, I think, let me just add on a couple of things. Number one, um, don't be afraid to, I think you said this, don't be afraid to experiment with your tools. So for example, for years and years and years, I tried to get into, you know, Todoist and, you know, Google Keep and all these, all these fancy apps to like, you yeah. know, keep track of my stuff. You know what I use now? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to say, I've this. gone back to the paper and pen too. In fact, I've almost found my phone, any electronic device on my phone, it's a bigger distraction, right? Yeah. I mean, how many times you get, you pick up your phone to get into some silly app to help with time management and you find yourself on social media. Oh, no kidding. So. No, it, uh, it happens all the time. So be, uh, don't be afraid to, to try, you know, traditional methods, which is just write crap down. Mm -hmm. and, and then it, and there is something that's satisfying about, marking it off there really is yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing is um, don't I, I would say this this is gonna sound weird given what I just said but don't experiment so much because sometimes you you like getting the because of the marketing that we're fed by by social media companies and different different apps or whatever you think that like if I only had the right app I would be organized if I only had the right app I would get crap done if I only had the right app I wouldn't be up till 1130 every night doing work no that's not true it's here and the app is a tool or the notebook is a tool eventually you got to pick one and move on like I just again like I said I spent years trying to find the right one and I finally was just like okay you know what I'm done I have a method now and right now what I do is uh, I use Evernote and at the end of the day I just make a quick little note of like here's what I didn't get done today and then I leave it and it works and then I use the app for like or my my notebook for uh, scheduling stuff so mm -hmm. don't be afraid to experiment but don't experiment too long yeah. because there is no silver bullet out there it's just what works for you um, and what what serves your interests, if you yeah. will. And I have, uh, my sister's probably the most organized person that I know, and she still just uses her, her Franklin planner, you know, paper and pen. It has been a tried and true, tested um, thing, and she has just stuck with that. And like I said, I think there is something to be said. Um, sometimes it's just nice for me like to have it on my phone because it goes anywhere with me and then I don't get stuck. You know, my grocery list is on here. Everything is on here. But at the same time, so much, so many times I find it a more of a distraction than a help for sure. So yeah. I like that. It's and the creative. other thing too, and, and I think you, you got this on your, your uh, infographic slide, but um, it, it seems like a small thing, but emptying your mind at the end of your, either your day or your work day is mm -hmm. critical. Uh, yeah. Because there's there's decision fatigue, there's mental fatigue that comes with making so many decisions and ruminating on stuff. So just uh, like I said, every night uh, I take my Evernote, I open it up, I write down, here's what I probably should do tomorrow, and some any other notes. I just empty my brain into my Evernote and then close it. I go to sleep and I'm done. And yeah. that that has helped me uh, sleep focus better. a little bit. Yeah, sleep better, focus <laughs> better, and just have more. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit sharper mentally thanks to thanks to that. So make sure to mm -hmm. to take care of that and, and understand that. These little things do matter for your mental health and, and yeah. Um, well, that. and I think keeping a notebook by your, by your bed. I mean, I don't know how many people are like this, but I'm a person who wakes up in the middle of the night thinking of um, things, and if if I can write it down, I can immediately go back to bed. If I sit and think about it, I'll be up all night thinking about that one thing. So, I think that's also it helps when once it's written down. If like the worry of it is gone. I mean, it's, right. and that's what I love about what David Allen was saying is like, empty out your brain, you know, just our, our brain is not meant to hold things. I think we all know that. Like, and so that what, that's what makes us, it gives us anxiety almost like right. I gotta remember this. I gotta remember this. You're not going to remember it. And so it's best if you just empty your brain out. I love well, that. And, and that does create space for, 
I mean, uh, if you're not constantly ruminating over stuff in your brain and it's out on paper or in your Evernote or whatever, that gives you way more space to be creative. I mean, how many yeah. times have, maybe I'm getting a little personal here, but like I've had really interesting revelations in the shower where it's like, you know, I haven't been able to, have, you know, to, I'm, I'm at my desk all day. I don't know how to figure out a project. And then I just empty out my brain and the next morning in the shower, I'm like, Oh, so that's how, you know, that can happen. So, uh -huh. you know, giving your, giving your uh, brain time to just be creative is, is yeah. paramount if you're, you know, in a creative industry, I suppose. Yeah. In fact, um, next week's lesson, we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, uh, talk about how um, our brains, uh, how brains work, uh, really. And I'm going to mm -hmm. make sure I, but I think that's a big mis misomer. We just think, um, that kids can work and work and work on projects, uh, math, for instance. I mean, the kill and drill thing isn't, it just doesn't work. And the more that we can give ourselves, like I said, your brain needs time to, to sit down. It needs time to uh, decompress and then it starts filing away and it starts working that way. I think understanding how the brain works is super important. Oh, yeah. So n next week's class is going to go, we're going to kind of go back to those uh, tried and true, those best learning practices, but we're really going to do a deep, deep dive. And I'm going to make sure to add in that, you know, how do brains work and um, to make that part of part of the learning process, because too many people, we just think that we can go on and on uh, with the learning or whatever, but if we don't give our kids downtime or we don't give them time to be kids, um, we're really we're we're stopping the learning process uh, more than anything so um so we're going to talk more about kind of those emotions how that plays into it understanding um you know what works for your family your students and then also i'll deep dive into that, that how that brain works and how we need that downtime as well right. as uh, as the learning time so very good all right well do, Actually, I, I want to add one more thing. Um, I heard this gal speak. Her name is uh, Laura Vanderkam, and she wrote a book called 168 Hours, I think. You can check me on that. Okay. But what she, what she challenged people to do is sometimes because we just get flu you know, flustered or you know, confused or just, just overwhelmed, we sort of tell ourselves that we're busier than we really are. Um, so what she suggests to, to clear out that, that clutter is to actually track your time and to see okay. how you use your time. She has a spreadsheet that's downloadable at her website at lauravandercam.com. I think it is anyway, but you go through this exercise and you see that like, and there are some people that are truly, truly busy, right? I mean, mm -hmm. there are people who have three jobs, who have kids, who have all this, but there are, and, and even, you know, those people waste time. But like what she says is, you know, you have more time than you think. It's just, you're not using it correctly. If you're, Definitely. you know, watching three hours of Netflix, if you <laughs> are, um, which is okay at times, but if you do it every night, so what she, she wants you to just, again, it comes back to everything, like literally everything comes back to being mindful. Um, using your time wisely is, I mean, it comes back to your goals. Do you want to constantly watch Netflix for three hours a night or do you want to get crap done? I mean, that's yeah, your choice. So be basic. mindful about that. So I would challenge anyone to, to go do that, to just print out your sheet, do it for two weeks and see how much time you really have, see how much time you really waste. You'll, you'll yeah. be shocked. I did it for a while and uh, it was shocking. It, it, yeah, it was, it was startling how much time I wasted. So well, and I have an app on my phone that tells me it tracks all my activity on my phone. And oh, that's yeah. shocking too. You oh, know, yeah, to that's look at how much time I spent on social media or it's, whatever. Yeah, it's, it's startling to say yeah. the least. Yeah, 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there. It, is, it can add up to be a lot during a week. And you think about that 20 minutes. Think about what, what project you could make big headway on just in that 20 minutes that you spent scrolling on Facebook or something. You know? Well, and, and if I'm not mistaken, Getting I read somewhere. Getting yourself riled up because yeah, of no. the vice presidential debate. Oh my gosh. No, what I, what I so, um, heard is that. Did I lose and, you? Are we back to this again? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I, I, I can hear you. Oh, sorry about that. Um, so what I've heard is that anytime, like if you're doing a task, say I'm laying out a book um, in InDesign, right? 
then I get a notification and I go check it. It's not just like five minutes of, you know, back over to Facebook and then back. It actually takes you about 20 extra minutes when you come back to really get back in that state yeah. where you're thinking about your task. And if you've got your phone dinging all day or Facebook sending you notifications all day, it's not conducive to actually getting stuff done. So yeah. the, that, that's the other thing I, was, I guess I would say for time management. I get so many emails a day and lots of people do. I'm not special, but like I've turned off my email notification yeah, thing on it. my phone, completely yeah. turned it off. Don't want it. Yeah, uh, you can't work in a flow state in that mess. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. absolutely. So definitely. I, agree. Um, I think that's good. And this is great. And I, uh, I've taken a lot away from this and, and I know it's going <laughs> to, I know it's going to help. So <laughs> <All right. laughs> and anything else? No, I think we're good. I just hope everyone joins us next week. Hopefully there's not a vice presidential debate. Actually, so. next week, the, the presidential debate, which should be oh, a great. free for all, is on <laughs> Thursday the 20th or Thursday the 15th. So okay. we, we are golden. Clear or clear then. <laughs> okay. we, are, we are golden. So, um, sure. so just tell people just very quickly before we leave, how do we find your content? How do we find these recordings? Okay. How, where do we find your resources? Okay. So I've been posting uh, the recordings on my website, the luminous Um I've been, yeah, let's open up that Facebook page. I'll post them there and we'll just, we'll just put it under um, the same name of empowered learning 101 and I can post them there too, but you can go to my Facebook page, the, uh, the luminous mind Facebook page, and I've posted everything there too, but okay. it would be better to have it in a universal place instead of just totally all my stuff <laughs> because I appreciate the sponsor from Idaho freedom <laughs> um, action group. Sure. So. Sure. Okay. All right. And we'll be back next week, seven o'clock, same place, the Idaho Freedom Action Facebook page. And it's also on the Idaho Freedom Foundation page, my page. Um, next week, we'll, what, what, remind us, what is the. Well, we're just going to oh, talk yeah, about. Oh, yeah, it's tried and true. Crude. Okay. Sorry yeah. about that. And we'll talk about a little bit about how that brain works, how to, okay. how to get more function out of your kids with better brain health. So. I, I'll, I'll, again, another subject that I need to. So thank you so much. And right. uh, we'll see everybody next week. Goodbye.